Hello guys, this is Panzermeister36. Today we are going to be continuing on with the painting and weathering series on our 506 Schwer Panzer Abteilung Tiger I with Zimmerit. The past couple of weeks we have looked at painting the camouflage pattern, applying some chipping effects and the markings, and also giving the model a pin wash to highlight details with fake shadows. In those previous videos, a lot of people have been asking me why the tools aren't painted. Well, that's what we're going to look at doing today. I was leaving it until this point. Now we're going to look at painting the tools, stowage on the back of the tank, steel wheels, metallic highlights on the drive sprockets, and so on. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin, I'm going to mix up AK Rubber Black and Gray Green to make a nice dark gray color for the tools. These are the brand new AK Gen 3 paints, which are just coming out on the market now, it seems. They're quite nice for brush painting. I mix these two colors about 50-50 and thin them with a little bit of water and I basically just paint it right on. These paints have excellent coverage and they dry really fast and also the brush marks disappear. So I do recommend these or Panzer Ace's model color as well. Metal tools are the shovel, the head of the sledgehammer, the head of the axe as well. And we also have areas like the head of the wire cutters as well as a little bit of the grip behind the clamp which I forget here and also the starter crank which on the Tiger is in two places so there's half of it there and half of it on the back as well not sure why but that's just how it is I also paint the tow cables with this color you'll note that I'm using a piece of paper to kind of mask off the tank this is an excellent tip if you're a little bit sloppy so I'm just kind of exaggerating that here but it's really useful also make sure you don't forget that the cable actually wraps around the end of the eyelets here so make sure you hit that with the gray as well. The track change cable is another tow cable essentially, so I do it exactly the same way. Paint the cable gray as well as the cable around the loops. Since the model has camouflage applied to it that would have been sprayed on in the field by some repair crews, I decided to make the camouflage actually go over top of the tools as the tools would have likely been in place when the camouflage was sprayed. The yellow is different because the yellow is painted on at the factory and the tools are mounted afterwards, but the camouflage would have been applied when the vehicle was actually at the unit. So I decided to repaint that over top of the tools, like I said. On the track change cable, I actually was a little bit fancy and artistic here, and I made the camouflage on that not exactly line up with the hull to simulate the cable having been used and then remounted in a slightly different position. The next color we will use is Pan's Race's 310 Old Wood. No prizes for guessing where this will be used. Again, I'm thinning it with a little bit of water because these paints, like the AK ones before, are a little bit thick in the bottle. So I'm thinning it about 50%, I'd say. And I use it to paint all the wooden areas of the tools. So that's the handle of the sledgehammer, also the handle of the axe, the handle of the shovel. The barrel cleaning rods are also wooden, and also the jack block. Do not forget the sides of it. I always used to forget the sides of the jack block, but they're also part of the wooden piece. Again, I'm repainting the red camouflage over top of the wooden areas of the tools. Next up, I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of the AK gray-green from before, and also some hull red. And my goal here is to mix up a lightish red color to simulate the red dyed paper that is used for the compressed paper grips on the wire cutters. People always say the grips are um, Bakelite. They're, these are not Bakelite, but the end knobs are. These should be a pale reddish color. And then for the Bakelite bits, we're going to use model color German camouflage black brown. This color is also good for chipping. So these are the parts that's Bakelite, which is a dark reddish brown color. I'm going to take the rubber black that we used before and I'm going to use it to paint some black areas. So for example that would be the machine guns, coaxial and bow gun if it were present. I also painted the base of the antenna this color because I noticed in some photos that it actually looked to be darker than the hull color. So I'm assuming it's rubber insulator. And also the periscopes. Now I think these are actually Bakelite in real life as well, but I'm just using black because it looks good enough. I paint both sides where they're going to be visible, then I clip them from the sprue, they go flying, 
and then I glue them into the cupola. Now on the Tiger 1, these are almost impossible to see, but I do lots of Stug 3s and other vehicles like that. On those ones, these are usually a lot more visible, so painting them black is a little bit more important in that case. I'm going to use the new AK brass color to paint the ends of the barrel cleaning rods. In my last video on painting tools, I actually painted these a steel color, but I've since found in some photos that these are actually brass. That makes sense because these actually should be of soft metal so they don't scrape the inside of the gun barrel, as somebody pointed out to me. So there we go. They should be brass. That's how they should look. Now AK gun metal is going to be used for some metallic areas of the tank. Mostly it's going to be the wheels. So I'm going to paint the contact surfaces of the drive sprocket where they're constantly rubbing against the tracks. These often get polished to a nice metallic sheen. So you can get some nice interesting effects here. I'm also going to paint the contact surfaces of the steel wheels. This tank is a late Tiger, so it doesn't have any rubber on the outside of the wheels. I think it has rubber on the inside, but not very much. The outer surfaces are all steel. Same thing with the idler wheel as well. Note that I'm only painting the outer half of the contact surface. I'll show you why in a second. Like I said before, these AK paints really snuggle down once they're dry, which is useful if you're a sloppy painter like me. So once the interleave row wheels are all in place, notice that you can't actually see the back set of the row wheels right now, and you especially won't be able to once the tracks are in place because the drive sprockets and the tracks themselves cover up the entire back set of wheels. So you can save some time and not bother painting the innermost steel areas. I'm just leaving them the black primer color I painted in the first video. I also painted the bucket on the back of the tank with the same gunmetal color. Remember, every Panzer ever had a bucket on the back. I'm going to mix up a Dunkelgelp color using the AK Middle Stone and white, just because I didn't have a Dunkelgelp color. Mix up about half and half, about a 50-50 mix, and painted it on. You can definitely see how bad a brush painter I am right there. But it really flattens out as you can see. I actually managed to reactivate the hairspray chipping effects that I did in the first video and chip them down to the black primer I used in the model to give some nice chipping effects there. I did the same thing on the other jerry can and really wore it down essentially all the way to black. I then selected the rubber black color again and I used that to paint a couple of touch-ups until the jerry can looked kind of like Panzer Grey which is how it looks in the photograph I'm using to reference this vehicle. Now at this point I've painted up a whole bunch of tools and it might appear as though I've missed a couple. Those would be the fire extinguisher, also the towing sea hooks on the front and rear of the tank, and also the jack. Now these actually should be left in the base color of the tank. I've been studying a whole bunch of reference photos, and all three of those should be the hull color. But they're a little bit boring if I leave them plain, so I'm going to mix up the same gray color I did at the very beginning of the video to give them some chipping effects. So once again, that's about a half and a half mix of the rubber black and green gray colors. And then I also thin it with water as usual. And I painted some chipping effects on there, which is really awkward because it's, well, I can see why people like to leave tools off the tank to paint them now after painting this jack. But I basically just did some little chipping effects on the edges. There's tons of videos on this on YouTube just to make it look kind of like worn and used because it's a jack. There we go. The result is pretty heavily worn, but I want to make it look interesting. The back of the tank is kind of boring right now. Also note that I've applied a wash to the jerry can, also to the fire extinguisher. I did so as well on the jack block we painted earlier. This was the same wash I showed in last week's video, so check that out if you're interested. We still have to paint the rear reflector and also the rear light on the back of the tank. I'm going to use Tamiya Clear Red X27 to paint the reflector. I don't usually brush with Tamiya paints, but a little bit of gloss work is fine. For the rear light, I'm going to mix up about half and half mix of Pans Rice's 309 Periscopes and Rubber Black to get a very, very dark blue color. Depending on the vehicle, these can sometimes be a very dark green as well. Like on a Panther and a Hetzer, 
The rear light style is a little bit different. It's still tubular, but it's a little bit different. And on those vehicles, it's dark green. But on a Stug 3, and I believe on a Tiger, it's dark blue. So it's really, really dark, so you can almost paint it black. Because once it's not illuminated, it just looks basically black. So don't worry about it too much. And with that, we've completed detail painting our tank. Now this video was pretty quick because I didn't want it to be dragging on too long. It's just detail painting. And really all I'm trying to show you guys is the colors that these tools should be historically. Nothing is really rocket science. I'm just showing you guys historically colors to use for detail painting German tools because some people are interested in that. On my Facebook page, if you follow me there, I'm going to post a bunch of reference photos in an album to show you guys my mentality for painting some of the tools in different colors and so on, just so you guys have some good reference. Hope you guys found some interesting details like painting the camouflage over top of the tools and also like the brass barrel cleaning rods. I've learned some new stuff since my last video on this anyways, so hope you guys did as well. As always, big thanks to my Patreon supporters. Those guys give me a little bit of money every month, which helps me buy the paint and products you guys see in these videos. Also, big thanks to my local hobby store, the Hobby Center here in Ottawa. They're not entirely closed down from the coronavirus. He's still shipping out some products, so I was able to buy some of the AK paints you saw in this video because they just came in. I needed some more colors like brass and white. So that was really useful. As with last week, I hope you guys check out Martin Kovac's video on his channel Night Shift. He's also working on a very similar Tiger 1. A little bit of a fancier, more differently colored one, I guess. But I recommend you go check out that video after you've done watching this one. After that, I will be seeing you guys next week with the next video on this Tiger 1. I think we'll paint the spare tracks and exhausts. Anyways, until then, stay safe out there, guys.